Hello there, thanks for joining me. This one is going to be a bit different. In my opinion, evolution is about getting better and improving things. So yeah, let's try something new here on this channel. I always try to give you as much value as possible and be informative while keeping my videos entertaining and fun to watch. So I decided to test this new format where I bring you information about specific topic related to a landing page or a website or a web page basically. And this is the first part, the theory. In the second part, I will take action and challenge myself to build the landing page I'm talking about. Trying to rebuild it one to one with some tweaks from myself or totally my interpretation of it. This is going to be fun, but as always, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Seriously, let me know if you like the idea. If you want to jump straight to the building part, use timestamp or go to this time. Now let's go with the first one in the series, I hope. I'm Jay Webski, your digital marketing buddy. Do you remember the landing page I've built for Santa? I was thinking what other pages I could possibly implement. So I googled the most expensive website and a bunch of articles about highest domain sales popped out. Well, fair enough, let's dive deeper. Wikipedia, show me what you got. Okay, here's the list of domain names that sold for three million dollars or more. The list is limited to domain names only, paid by cash. Sales that included website content or equity deals are not listed here. What do we have here? Eight above 10 million dollars. Of course, these are only public sales. Probably there are a lot more, maybe even bigger acquisitions, but we are not aware of them. I've blurred the fourth one and I won't say its name, not to get banned or so, but I'm sure you figured out what it is. It's three characters long, ends with X. What's interesting, the top three domains listed are services about digital assets or NFTs. NFTs.com, $15 million. 360.com, $17 million. Voice.com, $30 million. This may be a tell for us about what is trending. But let's not rely on just one source. We've got an article from Joe Styler on GoDaddy.com showing us some other websites on top of the list. On the fourth place, PrivateJet.com sold for more than $30 million. Actually redirects me to the page about this domain purchase transaction. I guess something didn't work out as planned. Next time, give me those 30 millions. I can make a better use of it. Number three, vacationrentals.com sold for $35 million. Another redirection, but to the same service after a rebranding. Or maybe it was just acquired by VRBO or Virbo. I'm not sure how to pronounce it the right way. Number two, insurance.com sold for $35.6 million. Okay, this is a pure 404 error page out there. I don't even know what to say. Literally, this page doesn't even exist. For more than 35 million bucks? Nice. At least put a cat image over there. Number one, carinsurance.com sold for almost $50 million. This is actually a very good landing page with a nice hero section and a clear call to action. Everything is working fine on this page and I'm pretty sure it has been tested a lot and is well optimized for conversion. Here begins the part two of this episode. So the practical one. Carinsurance.com is on top of the most expensive public domain purchases list. It's also a great landing page. So there could be no other choice for me than to implement this one. There are a few ways how we can do it. I think I'll just let you enjoy the time lapse. Maybe I'll tune in with a comment from time to time. 
let me know if you like it this way or maybe I should do it differently. Of course, I'm using Landingi Builder to implement this landing page. Landingi is a partner of this channel and a great supporter of everything I'm doing here. If you would like to try it, I will leave you link in the description. You can either start with a free account or a pro version with a free trial, no pressure. Ok, so let's start with the implementation and just for the record, this is for demonstrational purposes only, so this landing page I'm implementing, I'm rebuilding, it won't be used in any way to be competitive to the original one, so this is something I need to mention at the beginning, plus this landing page will be excluded from indexing in search engines, so it won't be you know, index in Google or other search engines. As I said at the beginning, this is for demonstrational purposes only, for education, for showing how to implement this kind of landing page. Also, there will be a proper information on the landing page about it with the link to the original one. So let's start building. So as you can see, I'm doing the top section of the landing page. Uh, this is the search icon. I will actually delete it afterwards. I think this should not be on the landing page. The main goal is to fill out the form, not to search for something else. Besides that, as you can see, I passed on the navigation menu section. So I'm not doing this completely. And I'm doing this on purpose, so I don't want any distractors on this landing page. Of course, the source landing page, which is the main page or home page for the whole service, it's mandatory for it to have different links and navigation menu to, you know, allow users to browse through the entire website. But if we are talking about landing page and maximizing the conversion rate, no navigation bar, no links, no distractors, this should be done this way. Next thing I would like to talk to you a little bit more about is the horizontal form. So people visiting this landing page, they can fill out this form with their zip codes and get quotes tailored to their location. So I'm doing this a little bit different. Um, not using the default background of the input because it also includes a label, an icon. So I'm using a box in the background of the original input and make the background of the input transparent so the box will be completely visible. I have more control over how it looks, how it's positioned. Plus I'm adding the label and the icon to match the original landing page. And this is how it went. So now I am about to do a section with three columns uh, where each column has the same layout. So an icon, a title, a little bit of text. So it's repeatable. What I'm doing here, I'm using uh, a section with three columns inside of it. And the reason for it is that on the mobile view, these columns will become sections. So this will flip from being horizontal to vertical, so one beneath another. And what I'm doing here is uh, I create the first column, style it the way it should look like in the end. After that, I'm checking the mobile view. So I'm, I want to be sure that when it's done, it looks exactly how I would like it to look like on the mobile view. And just after that, I'm copying the elements inside the column and duplicate it to the another column and another column and after that I just replace the image, the copy, but everything is already set, so the layout, the style, I just need to replace the copy. So this is how you deal with sections with columns inside of it. This makes the job a lot easier and it's just, you know, a saving of time in terms of also setting up the mobile view. So this is how it should be done and how I'm actually doing this.
So this is another example of using multi-column section. And as previously, I'm creating the first column, adjust its styles on desktop, adjust its styles on mobile view, and after that, just duplicate the content to other columns. So this is the way. So after creating this news section, which in my opinion is not necessary because you shouldn't be putting anything on your landing page that drives traffic outside your landing page, which this set of articles is exactly what it will probably do on this landing page. So as you can see, the next section has exactly the same layout as the previous one, so before the news one. And what I'm doing here, I just duplicate the whole section, move it beneath the section with the news and adjust the content, which makes my job and work significantly easier and faster. And this should be done this way. Besides everything is set up, I mean the layout, the styles, it's also done on the mobile view. So I won't have to do it again and rearrange everything on the mobile view because it's already done. It's a save of time. This is the way you should do it. Now the FAQ section and this is another situation where I've got something that is repeatable. So we will be having five the same sections with the same layout, just different content. So what I'm doing here, I just create the first one, set it all up, put everything right on the mobile view. And after that, I duplicate the section, put in the new content. And this way it's done much faster. Now putting together the closing section of this landing page. And in the original landing page, the form is different from the one used in the first section, which in my opinion is not that good because I think all call to actions should look pretty much the same on one landing page. So what I did here is just selected all the elements regarding the form and duplicated it to the last closing section. This way I don't have to style everything again. Just copy, paste, done. Once I finish the desktop view, now it's time to check if everything is set correctly on the mobile view. Some elements need to be a little bit repositioned, uh, need a little bit tweaking from myself. So this is something I need to do, but most of the layout is already done. So I just need to be sure that everything is set the right way. Just a few tweaks and we are done. So the new section was a little bit problematic in terms of checking the mobile view due to a lot of elements that had the same content, like the date or the author of the article. So I needed to, you know, jump between the desktop view and mobile view. So select the element I wanted to reposition on mobile view. I had to select it on desktop. So select on desktop, get back on mobile and then set everything in the right order. Last but not least, I had to put an extra section, which was not, you know, in the original one. Um, so this one is about telling the visitor that this is for educational purposes only. This is not a real landing page. They could, you know, get quotes from this company. It's just for showing how to build this landing page. So I inform all the visitors about it with a link to the original landing page. I did it obviously both on desktop and mobile. So we can also check this out by visiting the link in the description of this episode. 
Okay, it's time to publish and check how it went down. You can find the link to this landing page I've just built in the description of this video along with the original one so we can compare the original landing page with the one I've implemented and you know, tell me what you think. And I'm done. I'll get you the link to both landing pages so that you can check them by yourself. Let me know what you think and tell me if you would like to see this kind of stuff on my channel more often. As always, show me some love with your thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and stay up to date with all the new content. Yours, Jay. See you next time.